a very exciting, a very exciting time for you guys going abroad. So basically for those going to, um, because obviously some of you have visas, others don't have visas yet, but with the final briefing, we're going to go through obviously what you're going to need to have so that you can um, know what to do at the airport. Selena. So those going to America, you need to obviously have your TS-2019. Now, some of you would have it already if you've um, done your visas or completed your whole application. So then you would obviously have that already. Those who um, haven't completed the com complete application would obviously not have a DS-2019 as yet. You would have your passport. If you've been to the consulate, you would have a visa. Host family information is on your DS-2019. So you need to remember that. Um, if, if they ask you at immigration, you know, information on the host family, it's on your DS-2019. So don't panic. Insurance cards on your profile. So it's easy enough to get that. And spending money, very important. Spending money you need to take with you. Selena. Okay, and then you have your insurance card, which obviously is also on your profile, and read through the handbook. And remember, there's training that you need to do on your profile. Um, important to know what's in the handbook as well. The reason you need to have a copy of the insurance card with you is not just for when you're in the USA, but if anything happens en route, then at least you've got um, the insurance card with you to have some sort of cover. And then we're going to move on to the next slide. Spending money. Now, we say $500 um, you need to take with you. It doesn't have to be hard cash. Um, you can take, I always say, take about $100 cash, small denominations, and then get the, take the rest of um, on your bank card or an international foreign exchange card. International foreign exchange card, most banks have them. I know Standard Bank has a shift card. EPSA has a travel wallet. Not sure what the other banks have. And to change your money from rands to dollars, you're going to need proof of residential address, your passport, and your visa. Okay, so that's quite important to remember. But then also contact your bank with regards to, to make sure that you can use your card, your own bank card abroad. Because, you know, sometimes you might um, be able not convert enough money from rands to dollars. Now you want to use your South African bank card. Remember, the bank charges are going to be a bit higher. You need to check with your bank you can use that card abroad. And you often need to stipulate a time period of when you'd be out of the country. But also something to maybe bear in mind is that you need to give mom or dad power of attorney of that account. And the reason we say that is because if something happens to that South African account, you are over there, the bank's here, you need someone here to sort out your stuff. So that's why it's important to obviously get um, mom and dad to have power of attorney of your account. And um, so that if there's any issues, they can then obviously change that. But $500 is what you're going to need to take with you in total. It used to be less, but because in the US we now have that New York Connect and we find that the girls are just blowing their money. So that's why we're saying... Um, you obviously need to take $500 with you so that you, if you spend $250, you still have some money when you arrive um, with your host family. Because you don't arrive, then have no money, then need something. And then obviously you're going to have to ask them for an advance. That's just not cool. Next one, Selena. International driver's license. Now, you know, for the OPA programs, you need to have a South African driver's license. So you need to obviously do an international driver's license. It's not another test. It is just an application. You need your South African license. You need photos, proof of address, and your ID. And it's 275 Rand. In Cape Town, I know that they have an AA at, in Cavendish, and they have one in Tiger Valley. Not sure where they have them across the country, but you guys can obviously have a look. In some states, you would need to, have, you still need to have your international driver's license, but in some states, you might need to do a US license as well. So that's just something you need to chat to your um, host family about so that they obviously know that you, um, you then know that you need to have 
a US driver's license. And that's only in some states. And the reason for that is obviously for insurance purposes as well, so that the insurance on the host family's cars would cover if something happened, if you did something with the car. You know, did a little, made a little prank and something like that. So before departure, make sure that you complete all your training. There's lots of training on your profiles. So that would obviously be webinars. It would be um, courses that you do. And um, you need to ensure that it's all done before you actually leave. And also you, the, um, the partners won't book your tickets until your training's all done. So that's very important. If you don't complete your training, you're obviously um, not going to get your tickets. And then contact local au pairs in the area. There's obviously the au pair clusters. Information on that would be on your profiles. So contact au pairs in your area so that, you know, when you arrive there, you'd obviously meet, um, you'd have some contacts already. So that's obviously good. It's just people to make you feel at home, go for coffee, that type of thing. Next, Selena. Okay, so you can extend, once you've completed your 12 months, you can extend your program for another six, nine, or 12 months. So now you can either do it with a new host family or, or um, your present host family. So you obviously just need to decide whether, you know, you've got along well with the present host family and you can extend for another six, nine, or 12 months. So that if you extend for 12 months, your program would then be for two years. So if you're with the... Um, a new host family, it could be in a different state, but to get a new visa, it is normally not um, a visa like you would get initially where you go to a consulate and you have, stick a, have a piece of paper stuck in your passport. But if you're going to be traveling out of the US in the second year, you need to remember that you need to um, then get an actual visa put into your passport, not just an extension on your DS-2019. So that would mean leaving the US, maybe coming home for the two weeks, take your two weeks paid leave. Coming home, getting your visa sorted um, from the side, let contact your um, OBC consultant, get them to start working on that before you even arrive. So your appointment can be maybe a day or two after you arrive so that you can get your visa timelessly and not be stuck here for an extra week or so. Now, I know some of you want to be here yeah, for an extra week, but, um, you know, that's just the way to do it because you obviously want to go back timelessly. And if you're not going to travel the second year, it's obviously just the um, the DS-219 that gets extended. Cancel then miss flights. We don't want to know about the fact that you missed your flights, okay? So you do not miss your flight. And yes, sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes it's got to do with airlines having delays. You're missing your connection. But remember, that if you miss a connecting flight and it's all one flight that was booked through our partners, you would then obviously, um, the airlines would sort out that con those connections for you. But you go to the airline counter, you explain, um, you know, you missed your flight for whatever reason, or your flight got cancelled, you need to obviously get onto the next flight because you have to be in the US on this date. Bear in mind that most, um, for the US, most fat au pairs leave on a Monday, arrive a Tuesday, then you're obviously going to have your um, three days in New York. You also need to let um, our partners know and your host family know that you've missed your flight or your flight's been cancelled. And yes, sometimes it's not your fault. Um, and I say it's and also what you need to remember is that if your ticket says um, check in three hours prior to that departure time, please get to the airport before that because now you get to the airport three hours before, then there's a long check-in queue and which can take you an hour then obviously you're going to be delayed and then when you get to another section of the airport then you need to go through passport control so get to the airport timelessly you know if we live in south africa we have road works every corner you you turn um we've got traffic jams and there's other disruptions in traffic as well which i'm not going to go into today but um yes just go through me be careful that you don't miss your flight or and if your flight gets cancelled you know what to do if your baggage is delayed, you then obviously go to the, the baggage counter for that airline. You tell them that your bag wasn't there. Um, you would have tags for your um, your baggage. So they you would know that, you know, you handed in that bag. And um, basically what happens, you fill out a claim form. And you need to have a copy of that claim form. You do not leave the airport without it because that is your proof 
that you've obviously um, submitted a claim form for baggage delay or missing baggage. Um, and you need to obviously use your host family or final address in the US as to where you're going to be going with regards to um, where your baggage needs to go. And sometimes it's just delayed, so it will get there a day or two later. And that's why it's important in your hand luggage to maybe put a change of clothes, um, a toothbrush, you know, some extra stuff so that you're not stuck with nothing when you get to your destination. So, for example, when you get to New York, you obviously don't want to not have a toothbrush and stuff like that. And then, um, so that's quite important to remember. Next is Selena. Okay, so rematching. Every now and again, things happen, life happens. And maybe clash of personalities, or you find that you're picking up, uh, spending more time picking up after the host mom than after the kids. Your area director would be not more than an hour from where you are based. So that would basically be so, and the reason for that is so that they can obviously, you can contact them if there's an issue, they can then mediate. And nine out of 10 times, it is just communication. Communicate with your host families um, and you'd more, more than likely be able to sort it out yourself. But if it's something that cannot be resolved, your area director is there as support. Now, it can you can either Continue to stay with the host family for the two weeks while you're trying to rematch, or you can stay with the area director for two weeks. It's easy to rematch when you're in the US. And I say this because often au pairs want, um, families want au pairs, you know, soon and don't have to wait for visas and all of that. But in the event that you are not rematched, you are then obviously going to have to come home. And that, unfortunately, those flights, you would pay for yourself to get home. So just bear in mind, communication is always key. Chat to your host parents on a regular basis. Um, don't go and have your dinner in the bedroom. Have it at the table. Speak to them. Ask them how the day was. And if you keep those lines of communication open when there's an issue, it's easy to communicate with them. Next, Selena. Okay. You can check in online 24 hours before your flight. So you can, you can also book your seats often 48 hours before your flight. So if you're wanting to have um, a window seat, an aisle seat, you know, you can obviously often do that beforehand. Um, most times the airlines would just zap you in a seat. And if it's not one that you'd prefer, then you obviously can uh, move your, your seat to one you prefer, if there's availability, obviously. Um, but check in 24 hours beforehand. It's Good to do it. And the reason I say this, often with airlines, you find when you get to the airport, they have a chicken section and they have a baggage drop section. With the chicken section, you, they, you need to do the whole check-in process with them. With the baggage drop, um, you would then, obviously, they'll ask you if you've done your online check-in. You don't need to have printed your boarding pass, but you need to have done the online check-in. And you'll go through a security point first where they would check your passport to see that you have the right visa to make sure that you're obviously allowed to be on that flight. And um, that's obviously, the check-in makes it a lot easier for you. Baggage and local flights, 23 kilos chicken bags, okay? Only 23, not 25, only 23 kilos. And most times you'd find that you'd have... Um, It'll probably weigh about 20, even 19 for that matter. And luggage, five to seven Ks. Anything in liquid form, more than 100 mils per bottle needs to go in your chicken bag. And if you're going to be um, in a laptop bag, like a little backpack or so, is always cool to have because then you can put your, um, if you have something, a pouch that's got your ticket and your passport and all of that, in, it's in that bag. But bear in mind that do not leave that bag with anyone else. Do not let it out of your sight. Okay, so if you're on the plane and you have a little backpack, a little laptop bag, you stick it under your seat in front of you. When you get off the plane, so you go to the loop, you take that bag with you because your passport's in there. That's your life. Okay. And then also just remember that um, I know we have lots of other things that we want to take with us, but you don't have to take the world because you are going to want to shop when you're on that side. Um, Selena. Okay, so you obviously you know that when you're on the program, you need to do six educational credits. 
Now that could be split into two, it could be three for one and three for another, but you need to do six. And most importantly, if you're doing your second year, you need to do another six credits. Don't not do it. Because often you find that, um, you know, you go over for two years now, then you come back for two years and you want to go back for your second again afterwards. If you haven't done that six credits the second year, you're not going to be able to go back. So it's important to remember to do the six credits for the second year as well. You're obviously going to meet up with other au pairs. They're going to have um, picnics in the park, roller skating. And these are all organized by your area director. So, you know, so you meet other au pairs from around the world. But, and then, which is always great because... You don't want to be on this program on your own. And you want to make new friends. You also become part of your family, your host family. So you're going to be like the big sister, and um, which is great. So you need to meet up with other peers. You need to socialize, um, even if it's just going for coffee or something like that, going to the movies or e even another outing. So when you arrive in New York, it will either be New York April or JFK. Okay, so the... Um, depending on which airline you go on, which obviously depend on which one you would arrive at. And what you need to remember is that they're going to pick you up at the airport, a tour manager will pick you up. You will then stay at the Double Tree New York Hotel. And um, you'd arrive there the Tuesday, and then obviously everybody arrives different times, some will arrive in the morning, some will arrive in the evening. But that is obviously your day. What you do need to remember is that that night you're going to have to pay for your dinner. So that's why you also need that $500 to obviously pay for stuff that you need, but also for stuff that you'd like, like, you know, the shopping stuff that you'd like to do. And then you'd obviously go to, you'd do the New York City tour um, with um, OPK. And that's, so you basically have the first day you arrive, the second day you do the New York City tour. Uh, sorry, I'm jumping the, the gun here. So you do um, the New York City tour, you can have lunch, you can have dinner. and They've got a lovely pool at the hotel and we just open late at night. And because it's warming up now, so obviously you can um, swim late at night. But also remember that um, when you're going to, when you're in New York, just look after your good, your goodies. Your passport, as I say, is always your passport and your DS-2019 are the most important documents. Well, the only thing is going to always be replaced, but it's a mission if you lose those. And then... Um, I'm sure some of you have seen the highlights of the tour. And then you get together with other au pairs from the run, not from South Africa alone, but from around the world. So you'd obviously be able to um, meet other pair, au pairs, make contacts. And it's not just about making contacts for now when you're on the program. If you stay in touch with those au pairs, you know, you can maybe then go and visit someone in the Czech Republic at some stage, because that's where an au pair came from. So it is always good to remember, um, stay in contact, um, work out what you're going to do, you know, work out different games, chat, have coffee, and that type of thing. Next. Okay, so you're going to earn dollars, obviously. So you can basically be an ambassador. You can earn, um, I will lift a little in, I think, um, earn dollars for successful re referrals. So basically what happens is that you need to, if you're an ambassador, you would um, earn some dollars. And the person you're referring, when they pay the application fee, would obviously get a discount as well. So it, it works both ways. So it's a win-win situation. So obviously, as um, successful referrals means they need to pay the application fees. Okay, and then obviously social media is great to, to add those referrals onto um, if you're wanting to refer someone, get them to have a look at our socials as well so they can see what we do. Next, Selena. Okay, so we've got some travel hacks, um, which Annika will go through with you guys. Um, I do just want to say something that, um, with regards, you'll see it talks about international adapters. You get them, the US has got different voltage to what we've got. If you buy the proper international adapter, you'll get one that you can fit your um, charger into and obviously fit into their plugs. Annika, are you there? There we go. There she is. Hi, Janine. Okay. 
Hello everyone, my name is Anika. I'll just be talking you guys through some of the travel hacks. You know, some of you might have never traveled before, some of you might have know of these hacks, others don't. So um, rolling your clothes, that usually tends to save some space in your luggage. If you roll your clothes, you can even stuff your shoes with some of them or even stuff some uh, socks into your shoes. Um, wear your heavier shoes so that you uh, don't put too much weight into your baggage. So even with a jacket, you'll see on a few slides, there's also wear your heaviest jackets as well. Wear your baggage at home so that before you get to the airport, you're not stuck there and your bag is maybe overweight or you can figure out if you have some space, maybe put some extra stuff in that you want it to fit into your bag. Um, the international adapter, like Janine just said, um your vacuum seal packs uh that also everything is like usually the travel access just to save you some space and um weight in your bag vacuum seal your packs that'll help save space minimum toiletries don't take a year's worth of supplies of toiletries with you to the u.s um when you go you'll buy the things there try and find yourself some mini conditioner shampoos and everything Preferably if it just keep you like the first week, two weeks, because like I said, you're going to buy it there and it also saves some space in your luggage so that you can put on, put in extra clothes rather than um, fill it up with weight in your toiletries and everything like that. Um, under 100 milliliters liquids, especially if it's in your hand luggage, otherwise they will take it away. Um, I've had people take away my deodorants on the airport. I didn't even know it was beyond the 100 milliliter liquids to prevent yourself from happen from that happening to you. And also pack for the season. When you arrive to the US, pack the majority of the clothes for the season that you're arriving in and the next maybe. And also do research on the area that you're moving to. If it's going to be hot, if it's going to be cold winters with snow, if do you need to so that you are prepared and pack accordingly. And then also travel in comfort, not style, and also pack for an au pair, being an au pair and not style. I've been an au pair myself. I think 90% of the year I was either in workout clothes or casual comfy clothes that I usually wear at home. Um, you're not going to want to wear jeans all the time. You're working with kids, remember? <laughs> so make that the main focus of how you pack. And then also pack your socks in your travel pillow. I've done this. I've stuff some jerseys and everything in a pillow that I kept with me on the plane. Keep, um, keep your female hygiene uh, products in your hand luggage so that if you need it, you do have it with you and it's easy accessible. Um, the New York Connect to a clothes, pack that also in your hand luggage so that when you get off of the plane or you can even change into something that you want to, because you're going to be on a plane for a while, for a few hours that you can quickly change into other clothes, fresh clothes. Um, pack your toiletries in a plastic bag so that I've had, the, uh, luckily I put mine in toilet in plastic bags and some stuff did spill, but luckily it was in that bag. So that's a great tip. And then also if you're a usual, usual water drinker, pack an empty water bottle. What? Oh, excuse my English, an empty water bottle. So that once you get to security, you can fill it up either on the plane or at a water faucet once you're through that. Otherwise, they will take it away. Um, ask for more snacks on the plane after everyone has eaten. You know, you might get hungry at odd hours. You're traveling. Um, wear your jackets when you're checking in, the heaviest jackets or stuff that usually weighs, um, adds limit, add kilos to your luggage. And take some wipes for a quick wash up. You know, you want to freshen up on the plane before you get off just to <laughs> wash your face a bit. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Janine. Any questions, guys? Anyone have any questions? Did we cover all the bases? Oh. Nobody asking anything. Ah, Annika, it looks like we've knocked it out of the park here. Yeah? Thanks very much for taking the time Wait, to... Sorry, um... Oh, sorry. 
I have one question. If you arrive yes. in New York, how does the, if you want to message someone in South Africa and you're in another country, how do you, how does that work? Messaging them on okay, WhatsApp good or question. Instagram or? Good question. All airports have free Wi-Fi. So all you need to do is log on to the free Wi-Fi of that airport and just let them know, hi, mom, arrive safely. You know, flight was exhausting, but I'm here. So all airports have free Wi-Fi. And then you probably find you'd have Wi-Fi at, um, at the hotel as well. Um, you mm -hmm. might not have when you're on your tour, but um, you could always get a US SIM card if you wanted to. But first, wait until you meet up with your host family because they might give you a phone with a card and all of that, so then you won't need to, to buy one. But all airports have free Wi-Fi. Does that help you, Shanae? It does. Thank you, ma'am. No problem. Anyone else? Are we done? Well, thank you very much for taking the time to join us this evening. It was lovely having you. And um, you can always chat to your OBC consultant if you have any additional questions. And we look forward and have a safe journey. And remember, make the most of your opportunity in the U.S. Good night. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.